This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Rebecca from 1940, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. The tagline for the film, The shadow of this woman darkened their love. And the synopsis from Letterboxd, Story of a young woman who marries a fascinating widower only to find out that she must live in the shadow of his former wife, Rebecca, who died mysteriously several years earlier. The young wife must come to grips with the terrible secret of her handsome, cold husband, Max de Winter. She must also deal with the jealous, obsessed Mrs. Danvers, the housekeeper, who will not accept her as the mistress of the house. So, RJ, uh, yes. I watched this movie a couple years ago. Um, I think I watched it because it was a Best Picture winner. And it was? Yeah. This bad boy won Best Picture. Um, And uh, it's Alfred Hitchcock. I've got this here uh, Blu-ray set that I think it's like Fox put this thing together, MGM. And Mm. it's very convenient. And it's also why the Rebecca Spellbound and Notorious are all out of print from Criterion because they don't have the rights, Um, which is fine because uh, it's all about that picture quality. And these movies look pretty good here in this box set so far. Um Next week, we'll be finding out how Spellbound looks, because I've actually never seen that movie. But we're, talk- but we're talking about Rebecca right now. So uh, I watched the movie, like, yeah, like I said, a couple years ago. And I guess it didn't leave much of an impression. Uh, my letterbox star rating at the time was a big old three stars, which mm-hmm. is very much a reflection of this movie's fine. This movie's, like, okay. I, I didn't... It didn't uh, speak to me um, and I never wrote anything about what I thought about it um, mm-hmm. so when we were watching it this week I kind of went in being like oh, okay well I guess gotta knock this one out um, but yeah so this was the second time watching it and I felt like it was a much better experience um, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was a much better uh, just like I don't know more engaging story. I'm not sure if it's because in the intervening years of doing this podcast and watching these movies and paying attention to them in a different way that I was appreciating a lot of what uh, Hitchcock was doing here because I'd say that this movie does not feel particularly Hitchcockian. Um, even com- Ooh, that's a big word. Yeah, I know. Because uh, yeah. compared to even like uh, Lady Vanishes or The 39 Steps, uh, it doesn't really feel like it's the same director in some ways and i can't mm-hmm. really put my finger on it um i was reading the uh, fr- uh francois Truffaut hitchcock interview book and they, mm-hmm. they, they actually made the comment about how this movie doesn't f- actually feel like it's directed by him and even hitchcock said so himself and part of the thing that they mentioned is that this movie doesn't have a lot of humor to it it's actually mm-hmm. all very serious and psychological um uh, i guess with the film so this is his first american movie so he got brought over to America by that uh, big name producer David Oselznick, uh, mm-hmm. riding high on that Gone with the Wind era power, and uh, he he got that Hitchcock guy from Britain, and uh, I guess he was originally supposed to be working on a Titanic movie, um, and that never got made. Instead, he wound up making this, which fit because I guess that when he was making The Lady Vanishes, he wanted to make this screenplay or work on this uh, mm. an adaptation of this book, Rebecca. But it cost way too much money. And so it worked out, I guess, in the end because he got to make it anyway. Uh, so this movie reminds me a lot now of this. It's, I don't know. There's like a loose connection of movies. Uh, Pygmalion, uh, mm-hmm. Mother, uh, and, yeah. and Phantom Thread. Are all- yeah. <laughs> I actually thought the same thing about Phantom Thread to the point where I feel like there's an entrance – uh, there's like a scene at the entrance of their mansion, and I was like, "That looks just like the entrance of like the apartment townhouse in Phantom oh, the, Thread, the house of Woodcock." Yeah, like I, I was getting those vibes too. So, anyways, so, keep going. So I did a uh, Google search, just typing in like yeah. Rebecca Phantom Thread mother, and yeah, there's like I guess uh, P.T. Anderson actually said exactly that, like this was him trying to make a Rebecca movie because, he, but he also okay. made a comment about how people usually fail at making their Rebeccas. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think uh, as we've talked about on this podcast before, Phantom Thread is pretty awesome. Yes, it is. I've um, mentioned it many. I went in depth that one day about how much you, I like that. Yes, so. but yeah. So I mean, like, there's this and going along with the previous uh, Criterion Creep Pygmalion uh, and with Mother, we have the, this narrative of this kind of like wayfish, innocent, insecure young woman. 
uh, mm-hmm. who gets kind of brought into uh, kind of like a Cinderella figure who's kind of brought into uh, this very powerful older male influencer uh, mm-hmm. who's like either like some sort of great creative or just like the power dynamics completely out of whack. And she's brought into this like house and into this like kind of weird relationship um, to be because like so in Pygmalion, you have like a woman that's like kind of being trained on a bet by kind of like a sadist who kind of is indifferent to her. And it's never really mm-hmm. laid out as like a romance from the get go. It's kind of a farce uh, with Phantom Thread. You have this like controllish maniac uh, who kind of goes through women in a cyclical way and kind of meets mm-hmm. his match finally. Uh, and then with Mother, you have this sort of alle- like you actually get the allegory of this story that strips out like any sort of like traditional narrative, uh, and you just kind of get this like you actually it, it really embraces the house more mm-hmm. so than uh, even if Rebecca. But uh, yeah, no, I th- I think this movie is actually uh, how do you break it up? It's kind of like four parts. Uh, you get the, f- the, f- the first yeah. half the first half hour you get kind of the meat cute. Uh, where you, you have the unnamed female protagonist who becomes like Mrs. De Winter, but that's about it. You never learn her first name, which like mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't really notice until I went I was writing up my notes and I was like, what's her name? And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. she never gets one. Um, but of course, it's kind of interesting that her she doesn't have a name because the dead wife Rebecca her her absence is completely felt throughout and her name is the only one that you ever hear so yeah the fits uh from that standpoint yes um and yeah you just get to learn uh just kind of how much of an asshole uh old larry all of olivier here is uh, yeah. yeah it's good old larry uh good old creep creep favorite mr Ham- uh, old hamlet yeah, in the H- acting Henry the seat Fifth. this time though not just the directing seat of uh what jared has dubbed as one of the bottom five movies of the entire criterion collection so far what oh henry the fifth henry the fifth what is that for you like number five worst? Uh, i think it would make sense is it's yeah. it's henry five um mm-hmm. Yeah, that that movie's not so good. I don't know. It's it's got it's got some uh, in the running though in this next set of a hundred movies. Um, yeah. So yeah, you get the first half hour, which is all set at this hotel, and you get the meet cute stuff, and like you're kind of like wondering why is this lady falling for this guy? He seems like kind of a jerk, calling her a little idiot and stuff like that. <laughs> but it turned, yeah. but, but because it's 1940, they're falling in love, um, mm-hmm. and then you get to the second quarter. I mean, this is just excellent stuff. Beautiful photography, camera work. Uh, the performances kick up a notch. You get these great miniatures and stuff like that of the, the Mandalay set. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's like an exploration of the psychology of the house uh, as we watch our p- protagonist kind of integrate into the house that's been established. And like, it's this oversized world. Like, every, like there's like doorknobs that are at head height. It, it just doesn't make any sense at all that someone would build this house I- this way. I love those doorknobs. I think they're super cool. Yeah, it's like imp- it's quite impressive, and it's like it, it really makes her like diminutive in this mm-hmm. setting. Um, yeah, but then like, and then you get this, like, then you get like kind of the uh, per- the the villainous, the, the mm-hmm. evil figure, the uh, Mrs. Danvers, I guess as she goes by, um, mm-hmm. who I guess is your like the it turns out your predatorial lesbian kind of woman who, yeah. but it's like very subtle in the way that 1940s movies are, but it's like not that subtle because it's like, mm-hmm. well, lesbianism's evil. Um, but like you get these scenes of her, like basically doing these walkthroughs of this giant house. Uh, and it kind of at times feels like you're walking through like the giant dead corpse of a, the memory of a woman. And it's like, really mm. like, I don't know. Like, it was actually, I kept thinking about that. Like you're just walking through this person's, uh, possessions the, the, the wake of her like she's come and gone and like everything is mm-hmm. like you're left in like uh uh you're, it's kind of a to be a, a pretentious asshole sublime experience of like you're mm-hmm. you're like you're like no this, i don't like you're, that yeah you're, you're very small in the sense of this really big presence that's kind of like the the kind of visual stuff that's kind of going on at times like where she's walking down hallways and everything's just like so much bigger than she is and like the mm-hmm. I, and the idea of rebecca is bigger than anything she can live up to and she's constantly kind of having that follow around her and it keeps like building all this stuff about like just like how she'll never live up and her husband's like fucking dark turns that come out of nowhere that don't make any sense. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you get this like thing where she's kind of getting 
coerced into suicide uh, after being tricked into dressing up in a Halloween costume uh, that is like a what her predecessor dressed up into because mm-hmm. Mrs. Danvers is a real piece of crap. Uh, <laughs> but before that can all pay off, you get like a random explosion of a boat off the coast of Mandalay, wherever it is on the island. It's just kind of in the middle of the woods. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you get this big reveal that I think actually works really well after all these years. It does. Um, yeah. And yeah, you get a uh, old Lawrence Olivier who just he turns out it's like, oh no, he wasn't in love with this woman and not able to get over it. He he fucking hated her guts, and mm-hmm. uh, he gets he feels really guilty because he kind of killed her by accident. Um, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Then he you know got rid of the body. Uh, so you got, you start mm-hmm. falling into the kind of the wrong man sort of uh, Hitchcock vibe, uh, but it worked out okay because it turns out the same night that he got rid of her body and they went looking for her, uh, there was another dead woman, and he just went, "Yep, that's the one." <laughs> that mm-hmm. that's all well and good, and he thought he kind of put it behind her, and he met this new lady, and they're gonna hit it off, and everything's gonna be swell. He's he's not mentally damaged from this. Um, and then, he seems pretty stable. Yeah, but, and then the movie kind of shifts into this procedural mode for like kind of the the final third and fourth, and uh, it's definitely like I felt kind of a come down from like the build up of it. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like just like oh no, are people going to find out about this? But it's kind of like how in the ruling class from a couple of weeks ago, where you have this like kind of world that like no one could possibly believe that this man from privilege could actually have done anything this terrible yeah. and so they're just like oh you'll be fine i mean there's not a big deal here <laughs> um and then mm-hmm. finally it all pays off they find the right doctor who's like oh yeah she had she had cancer and uh and and uh it was all a, a, an elaborate suicide to like fuck with people's lives because rebecca's a bad bad woman um and then things wrap up mm-hmm. in spectacular fashion with a really amazing big fire burn down sequence um, and you get this like really weirdly reminiscent shot of Citizen Kane's final shot of this big close up of like a burning R, which mm-hmm. is like kind of the rosebud thing. And it's like, oh, this movie came out like a year earlier and while well, uh, that was in production. So I'm not sure if that was uh, a coincidence or just total uh, a ripped job by uh, mm-hmm. old uh, hack Orson Welles. Yeah. Boy. He is a hack. Yeah. And dead. Just like That's why I don't watch like, any of his like movies. Warren Oates. Uh, uh, Warren Oates, I think, is still alive. If Warren Oates isn't alive, but Kirk Douglas is, there's something real weird going on here. Okay. And I don't get it. So is, I don't know. Is this he, kind of a Berenstein Bears Mandula effect here going on? Mandula? No one says it like man, that. Man, Come on. Man, Mandula. Mandula? Mandula. Mandela? 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 What the. This is preamble talk, man. This isn't YouTube review RJ. quality stuff. What? <laughs> what, 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 did you, what did you think of this Rebecca? Uh, Rebecca. Uh, Remain Stamos. <laughs> Pretty good joke, eh? Uh, hey. Yeah, I did it. Um, so, uh, my history with Big Al. Uh, I've seen some of the big bangers, the all-time hits, that kind of stuff. I haven't seen a lot of these little guys, so uh, that's why this Criterion Creeps initiative is uh, playing off in our favor. Uh, like Lady Vanishes and this, and then even the next couple. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably movies I wouldn't have watched because I don't own that big fancy hitch uh, box set that uh, so many people desire in their life. There's people who have jobs. There's people who have jobs and, uh, you know, normal lives and can afford the things they want and aren't just living in misery. Uh, so anyways, living in misery, like Rebecca, um, I had never seen it, never heard of it. Well, or didn't know anything about it, I should say. Uh, I think this movie is pretty good. Uh, pretty, pretty real good. Um, I didn't. Pretty love- real good. Pretty real good. Uh, I didn't love it. Uh, I do think it is a really good movie, though, um, for a few reasons. Uh, I think uh, some stuff that you touched on, uh, I think that this movie does such a good job at like building this ghost story that isn't really about ghosts. Kind of like when you brought up Phantom Thread, that's what I was thinking about the whole time watching this was like this this 
uh, haunting presence that overtakes everything and it influences the like the everyday lives of the people and like the environment around you because uh, that's what Phantom Thread is like I think to a bit I had no idea that uh, PTA himself talks about Rebecca but I can see it now uh, but for Rebecca I thought they do like such a really good job at having that like I said, haunting presence. Uh, and I don't think it's even just about Rebecca, but like meeting expectations, uh, because for her, it's all about like living up to this kind of higher standard, uh, that she's not used to. And it's something that she, she doesn't really belong in. So she, you, you really, you really empathize with her because she's trying her best. And even when she does try, she gets like shit on for trying to not well, be herself. Well, cause she kind of jumps from like one, like shitty relationship. Spectrum. And it's actually, it's like a lot of, uh, bad ladies. Cause you get like that, yeah. uh, Van Hopper lady who's like, yeah. actually, who's in the very beginning, uh, which totally yeah, she get, sucks hard. Yeah. She's like, but she's, it's a great performance. Uh, yeah. the woman that plays that she's really good. It's like, uh, mm-hmm. one of those types of characters that, uh, they're they're not as they don't realize they're dumb and they're just or just like they think they're smarter than they are um and it's like so she goes from that kind of bad relationship into the relationship Mm -hmm. with mrs uh danvers and then there's like the overall encompassing uh rebecca character so lots of bad ladies yeah a lot of bad ladies man bad hombres uh so I think they do a really good job at showing that and they do it in a few different ways. Like there's the direct like verbal ways that they do it, but there's a lot of like visual, uh, things that they do. Uh, there's one really good shot that I like when she like first, it's like her first day after, uh, like waking up in the mansion and she doesn't really know what to do, like how to have breakfast and stuff like that. And she sits down at the table and it's, it's not like a long shot. It's maybe like five, six seconds, but it's just her sitting at this huge table by herself. And she's totally like at odds with what to do with herself. She's just kind of like, uh, what do I do now? I think that shows it in like a really good way. Uh, and then just, I don't know. They're like what you said too, where you don't even know her name. Cause uh, I watched this with Andrea and she, she brought that up too. She was like, what's her name? And I was like, I don't think she has one. I was like, I've only heard her, them call her Mrs. DeWinter. And I think that like builds it up really good too, because everyone refers to her as that. But then they refer to Rebecca as Miss DeWinter as well. And she's like constantly in this state of like not knowing kind of like not knowing where she fits into this whole this world this new world that she's dropped in because people want the other one people talk about the other one but at the same time they're like you are you are her now so be her and she like can't really negotiate that like she can't fit in with what all these people want and i think that's really good uh that that's what i think the heart of this movie is and the best part of this movie is like like I said, the ghost story aspect of it where it's this like uh, overwhelming uh, pre- like shadow that like casts over every element, like the people, the house, like everything. I was like, man, that's it's pretty good. I like that a lot. Uh, there, So I think this movie's like pretty good. There are a few things that I wasn't like – didn't dislike, but I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, I do think they lay on the Rebecca stuff a little thick at some points. Uh, and like, I, I get why they do that, but some points it's like kind of goofy. It, it dips into, I think where they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, you, you did this pretty good, but she was amazing. <laughs> and, uh, she, she, the, the new girl's like, Oh yeah, yeah. I heard she was good. And it's like, no, she was amazing. Are those and like like, the scenes with like the, those like the idiot friends of the, kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's like kind of like the. I mean, that's sort uh, it's, of your it's the point. Really, yeah, because like, they're like they're like those obnoxious asshole people that are like, I don't know. Like, so I was imagining because that was the scene that really made me think of Mother was like how yeah. Mother has those scenes with like when Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer show oh, up yeah. and you're just like exposed to like how awful they are. But it's like an awful that is far more like heavy handed and uh, cause, yeah. because of the way I mean, contemporary filmmaking is and the way Aronofsky would handle like a like a visceral kind of like kitchen sink uh realist sort of style where it's like it drives home how uncomfortable and horrible people are whereas mm-hmm. this movie again it's like a product of its time 1940 where it's yeah. like people it's gonna be a little softer and kind of like huh, these people are kind of funny and charming and like they're, they're just they just keep hammering on about this thing because that's what mm-hmm. people do um they don't realize that oh this actually is like kind of 
the wrong thing to be saying to somebody. Yeah, yeah, I I get that too. Yeah. And uh that's like this other point too where it's kind of like it's kind of like a catch-all thing where I I get why they do it and it it does really set the scene well, but at the same time it comes off kind of uh not bad like what you were saying like a product of its time. So like some of the dialogue in this directed specifically at like the lead actress is like so harsh and like uh, like things like when you first like are introduced to people on the cliff and the guy's like, why don't you get out of here, you dumb bitch? And then people like they say stuff like they don't say bitch, but they're like, you dumb old idiot or like you, you mm. such a little idiot. Yeah, lots of little idiots, a couple of little, anyway. little idiots. And like the way that like you said, they kind of like demean her and like belittle her a little bit. Like it makes sense because it's like building, just, adding all this pressure onto just her. Just like mother. Just like mother. Uh, and then the one that I thought was really like real bad was when he's like, just promise me not to wear black satin pearls or be 36 years old. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, man. I was like, that's a, such a shitty thing to say. Like, well, what about the not line? even just like you dumb little little idiot. What about that line he drops about making violent love behind a palm tree? <sighs> Yeah, uh, I wrote that one down too uh, because uh, when when we first heard it, I thought he said something else, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" <laughs> I was like, "What's going on here? Why would he say that?" And then I was like, "Oh, violent love!" I was like, "That's no better than what I thought I heard." <laughs> so, yeah, like uh, that's weird, and yeah, like he is just—he's like a huge prick, yeah. and. So there, there's sometimes things like that where I like I do think that it does show a good job of like why it kind of sucks for her. But, uh, yeah, and then I think the reveal is really good. Um, I didn't see it coming. I was like, ooh, shit. I was like, that's spicy, baby. I was like, uh, that's a that's a nice little twist in there that uh, I didn't see, uh, see from far away. But that also, like, this movie, I think, fumbles a little bit on what comes after that. And you touched on that a little bit. But mm-hmm. I think, like, the, tri- like, the judge trials yep. – that he's put in with like uh, the dude who was Bagheera in the Jungle Book cartoon, uh, that guy. Yeah. Um, yes. Like those those judge trials where he's like, oh, as you see here by this written letter, uh, I have uh, <laughs> irrefutable proof uh, that uh, she was not suicidal. Like I think all that stuff isn't great. Um, when when you were talking about how it's kind of like ruling class, where like oh he couldn't do it, I was like all right, I guess I can see it a little bit more, but uh, I I mostly didn't like that part of the movie yeah. because I was like eh, I'm not I'm not as on board with this where it turns into this weird like you said procedural and I was like this is like this movie's over two hours long they really could have cut that out and I think the movie would have been better for it. Yeah, because that's, I mean- that's just me. Well, I mean, like, so this movie's like just like two hours, ten minutes or so, and like I'd say that, like, probably, like after you get the big reveal, the movie like yeah. gets into the procedural stuff, and that's definitely like the least memorable part. Other than it's just like, how is he going to get away with this? And now it's he, she's yeah. got to help him and navigate this and get this guy who like was in a bad position. And then you yeah. also have, uh, I mean, so like, yeah, the other thing, two things there uh, to follow up on. The stuff with Rebecca, it's kind of like a uh, – I've seen some people reference it. It's like, it's like a proto-noir or kind of like a side noir where like sure. you, you've seen all the film noir – or actually all the noir stuff that you would see in a movie, it's only described to you after the fact in sort of this like uh, kind of prolonged monologue that he's giving to her at the kind of uh, the little cabin by the uh, the sea. Uh, yeah. And like there's oh, such awesome camera work where you get like the recreation yeah. of like and then she got up and she walked across the room and you're just like the camera's following nothing except for like just like the empty chair and then it goes up and it, it pans over where she would normally be walking. And it's really like it's really nice stuff. Um but yeah, like you get that element of like she's sort of like the femme fatale, but you never see her and she's already like taking care of herself. And like her whole idea was like to screw him over in the end. And now it's like her plans mm-hmm. want to come to fruition. And it's about whether or not she's going to get away with it or not. And then just like reference to her, her like kind of like seducing the uh, the housekeeper. Mm-hmm. Um, and like there's like these weird little subtle things. And it's like, I don't know how obvious they play now like there's this like thing about that i didn't know about until uh i took some art history classes about like about about fur like and like Mm -hmm. how like that's like this weird like uh cunnilingus reference oh jared come on man this is this is the youtube portion (laughs) people don't people aren't here for that kind of talk (laughs) 
<laughs> so, uh, and frankly, I don't like it either. Well, the whole of this next part. So that that bit where uh, they're talking about uh, mm-hmm. vi- violent love, uh, I was like thinking about what that sounds like. Uh, is that why you're making that sound right now? That grinding sound? Uh, yeah. No, it's it's kind of a more of the sound of uh, apples being thrown repeatedly at a brick wall. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I, uh, I'm upset by your choice of where to take this conversation. Yeah. This is uh, on the level of the incubus and some of the dialogue in that. I think you're... Well, you'd have to you'd have to listen to the whole episode located on SoundCloud or iTunes to uh, get our yeah. hot, RJ's hot review of the 1982 classic, The Incubus. That that's how I picture it. This uh, this violent lovemaking that they talk about in oh, Rebecca. Yeah. Uh, and I can just picture John Cassavetes stepping into scene on Rebecca and just spouting out some lines about aggressive amounts of uh, fluids and things like that. <laughs> that's so. right. Anyways, uh, uh, hey, how about that dog Jasper? That, that oh, dog's pretty cute. That's a, is that a cocker spaniel? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, there's a scene where he's like in the side, like in the the side of the frame, and I don't think he's supposed to be there or something. <laughs> it's really funny, uh, and I was like, oh, that's super cute. I like this dog. I like this Jasper guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a good boy. He is a good boy. Um, I'm also kind of on board with that uh, that gross uh, big lady from the start uh, because she's doing stuff like she's just laying in bed and they give her like a shot of NyQuil or like or something and she's like, ugh, medicine. And she's like, I need to drown that out with chocolate. So she's just chasing uh, like medicine with like straight candy and I was like, yeah, I can get on board with that. Yeah. Yeah, then you get yeah. kind of her, uh, yeah, the, the interactions with her and uh, – Mrs. De Winter, uh, the future Mrs. De Winter, are like really well done because like there's like the whole thing of her like playing up her like uh, kind of femininity when it comes to like talking to uh, Larry Olivier, and she's like, yeah. oh yes, I want very want to be very complimentary and be very helpful to this very important person, but as soon as he's out of the picture, she just fucking dumps hard on her, and uh, yeah. I think that's a uh, that's pretty real. It's a pretty real experience for I think a, a lot of women. Um, oh, that's real. Yeah. I also liked her presumptiveness that uh, he wanted to bang her. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she's like, ooh, she's like, why don't you come up to my room later? I know you're looking for that, like, hard action. She says something gross like that, and you're like, ew. Yeah. Very, so, uh, very saucy film. Yeah, much much like us. Mm-hmm. Saucy, saucy ladies. There's, a re- there's like, a catering business in our town called Saucy Ladies. I don't know what they do, though. Uh, they make sauces and soups. Is it is that meat pies? Is that real? I think so. Yeah, pies and stuff. Yeah, meat pies. Shit. Oh, you're being weird again, aren't you? No. Now it's weird. Hey, you know what's a weird line in this movie? What? Someone says wretched nuisances teeth. They're talking oh, about like their yeah. teeth. And it's like wretched nuisances teeth. Yeah, it's the idiot, it's like the that's idiot, such a weird yeah, thing the to idiot, say. The idiot people. Yeah, the idiot people. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they're like they've got Harry Potter at home somewhere. Uh, excuse me. No, I'm you're, I'm, I'm talking about like the actual character, not, not the. Oh, box. you're saying they're Junkie. like Uncle Vernon's? Yeah. With, uh, I was gonna say you're gonna get uh, an absurd yeah. amount of hate mail from you're people so, listening if you badmouth that stuff. You're so thin-skinned, you, you big, yeah, you, you, you Potterhead. I didn't say from me. I said from fans of the show, the people yeah. listening right now. They're and maybe you'll get hate mail for once instead of me. For once. Yeah, it's not coming anytime soon, buddy. I'm amazing. I'm a great specimen. Oh, God. I hope someone just fucking tears you apart soon. The way that I like, like, like in the been, incubus. Yeah, like in the incubus. You get your uterus destroyed. Like <laughs> a dump truck full of sperm oh. driven through your uterus. Jesus I hope is Christ. what happens. Wow, this is taking a dark turn here with Rebecca. Well, that's what uh, happened. Yeah. Wait, whatever. Uh, so what I'm saying though, RJ, uh, I yeah. guess, is that I think if and when you uh, you watch this movie, I think you may have the same experiences that I had where you'll be like, wow, this movie is way better than I think it was. Because, um, yeah, it's pretty good. And I don't know if it's maybe because we live in this post-Phantom Thread mother world. And actually, uh, another uh, side note. So I was looking up this, like, Phantom Thread stuff in relation to the ship to this movie and also looking up stuff like, is there anything about Mother? The discussion around Mother is non-existent. Nobody talks about that movie anymore. Maybe it's because the title's kind of, like, obscure and, like, 
mother exclamation mark in regards to anything just doesn't mean shit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. People never really made that linkage between those movies, and they came out the same year. And people mm. only just talked about how people, audiences hated this movie. Um, and even yeah. like Phantom Thread, I see people who go on about how that movie's really boring, and it's like I don't, I don't know. They're <laughs> yeah, I had I had dudes too that like guys that are usually on track with me for like movie preferences and like their taste and stuff. And they're like, Oh, Phantom Thread was so boring. I'm like, what movie did you watch? <laughs> Bud? Chumpestein. Bud? I was like, that movie was wicked good. Yeah. Yeah. This post Phantom Menace world that we live in is just Phantom just, Menace world. Well, yeah. Does, does that influence the way that you watch current cinema? Phantom Menace? Uh, yeah. Certainly. I, I guess for some people it probably does because of those red letter media reviews. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, who hates Rebecca? Um, probably some chumps. Yeah, some chumps. Uh, we got here one and a half star from Small Town Girl. The only thing oh. terrifying about this movie was its characters' IQs. Uh, small Small Town Girl gave this a half star, not one and a half oh, star. Oh, I think I, I meant oh, I did say half star. You said one and a half. Or star. maybe I meant she gave it gave it one half star. <laughs> half star. Yeah. Uh, they also gave Phantom Thread a half star. Oh, this movie was terrible. Completely <laughs> baffled me why anyone would like or be interested in this. Uh, yeah, so they don't like the modern go- ghost story, but. They do have uh, one of your favorite movies, Amadeus, and uh, my favorite movie, Eternal Sunshine, as uh, their favorite films. So, hmm. Small Town Girl, she's all over the map. All over the map. Yeah. Uh, Lermontov. Lermontov? One star. That's like two half stars. Yeah. Uh, technically, hugely impressive. <laughs> As far as the rest of the film, it was overlong and hugely overrated. Man, it's like he's revo- this person's reviewing a penis or something. Uh, the, oh, the narrative scary. was far too replete with wordy twists, which sucked the energy out of the film, especially in the second half. Moreover, the sympathetic male lead was a complete arsehole who appeared to want a quasi-servant as a wife. Make yourself useful and pour me a coffee, he said to his fiancée, seconds after having his proposal accepted. And uh, with his hand a fraction of a millimeter from the coffee, last night I returned to Blanderly, and I won't be rushing back. Uh, you know what I'm not rushing back to? Any of this pretentious dude's favorite movies. Uh, a lot of Criterions, stuff like The Red Shoes, which is a very good movie. But this guy or this lady, this Lermontov, uh, I think they are um, playing the the game where they like hyper rate stuff uh, to like attract attention. Yep. Uh, they gave Mother a half star. Uh, they gave killing of a sacred deer a half star. Wow. They gave Rocky four a half star. Uh, Come on. Uh, yeah. Well, it's not a half star movie. Yeah. Mr. Mom isn't half star. Good Lord. It's all half star. It, it's either all they have is half star reviews or five star reviews of Criterion's. So fun. Mm. Tara. Two stars. When this movie was over, I turned to my dad and said, well, at least it wasn't as bad as the birds. And I think that's probably the best thing I can say about it. Uh, The best thing I can say about Tara is that uh, she likes Mad Max Fury Road, Mm -hmm. Paddington, Little Miss Sunshine, and uh, Mamma Mia. All pretty uh, quality movies. Uh, They gave Phantom Thread five stars. Well, Weird. Huh. Weird. Wild. Weird, wacky, and wild. You got any more brain one, busts? One more. One more. Nora. Two stars. Mm. I get it, Hitchcock. Lesbians are evil gaslighters, and bi women are manipulative sex fiends, and the beautiful hets get to live happily ever after. The movie looked okay, I guess. Um, One of their favorite movies is that movie Bound. I think that's a lesbian uh, yeah, movie. Yeah, it's got some lesbianism. 
Well, lesbian action. Uh, also, Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, one of my favorite movies, Men in Black. Whoa. Ooh, wild. What did this person get five stars to? Uh, Matrix, Men in Black, Do the Right Thing, Moonlight, Autumn Sonata. Huh. A lot of Wachowski movies. Speed Racer, five stars. Oh, yes. They identify with those uh, trans heroes. Yeah. I never seen Speed Racer. Was it any good? I tried watching it. I just I couldn't get into it. Yeah, that's what she said. Ew. Ah, well, there you go. You can't <laughs> please everybody. Um, Ooh, okay. Any last thoughts here about Rebecca? Uh, no, I think Rebecca's pretty good. So like I said, I thought it was pretty real good. Um, I have some small problems with it, but uh, kind of maybe like what you said, maybe uh, upon rewatch years later, uh, those problems won't exist anymore. Yeah, I'd say that like the uh, that first half, or a little bit more than that, is like really, really good. Uh, everything once they get to Mandrelay and wandering around that mansion, where you have like her yep. just being like followed around by these like decrepit old people who just like no matter where she goes, she's just being followed and followed and followed, and they're like, being very helpful. But it's just like awkward and uh, all that stuff. I think is like really well done. Um, it's a great space. Uh, yeah. I don't know pretty i think it's i think it's a really interesting movie uh, i'm excited to get to more of these notorious i've seen a few times but yeah spellbound i've never seen so we got those to look forward to i've never seen a lot of movies yeah <laughs> well we're, 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 we're changing that one week at a time we're trying man we're yeah. trying uh after the break rj burns the podcast down and dies as a result and we all live happily ever after we would be happier if we didn't have to do this fucking thing. <laughs>